Welcome back to another Inkscape tutorial. In this video, we'll learn how to draw this scene, a mountainscape with a house and a sky and some hills and trees. And then we're also going to learn how to convert this into a night scene. So it's day now. In the next video, we'll learn to convert it to this night scene that looks like this. So it should be a good video. This is artwork that comes from UKR Art Design. Check out more of his work in the link in the description of this video. And I'll top over to the screencast. The first thing we're gonna do is start with this Bezier Curve tool. We just left click to create nodes. This is a sped up um, portion of the video. Then we select this and also this rectangle behind, we right click and go duplicate and then go to path intersection. And this lets us create an object just here at the bottom. It makes our path, it kind of clips the, the parts of it that are outside of the border. We'll turn off the stroke and we'll add a fill paint and then we'll change it to whatever color we want down here at the bottom or we could change it in the fill and stroke color section as well. And then we'll just keep repeating this process over and over again to draw different objects in our scene. So we left click to create these points uh, with the Bezier curve tool. We duplicate the background and then go to path intersection. Sometimes your opacity gets set down low. It remember, Inkscape will remember where your opacity was set. So you can turn up your opacity or down to create the look that you're wanting. And we'll adjust these colors um, as the video goes on. These four icons at the top here are important. They help us choose what level the path will be on. So we can set a path behind another path or bring it back to the front to be in front. So these are good tools to get used to if you're not familiar with them. This is probably more of an intermediate level tutorial. Check out some of the other uh, tutorials. A lot of these skills are the same. So using this object or using a path intersection and path difference and when you clone an object is a, a good method, but it's not the only method of creating different objects overlapping with each other. To create a tree, we'll draw a triangle, and then using the path tool, we'll draw in where we want the contours of this tree to be. And then selecting both objects, we can select them both or do shift select to have them both selected. We go to path intersection again, and that creates this look, a single path with this kind of cut out. And then we can change the color. We can right click and go duplicate, and we can move these around, changing the size and place them throughout. We can have these trees in the foreground, but we can also add them to the background and just changing the color to match whatever that background is. Uh, we can have them look like they're more off in the distance. So we can create smaller trees, changing the color to, to create that look. But remember, we've only created one tree and we get this whole look by just duplicating this tree. Sometimes you might want to mirror or even rotate the tree a little bit uh, to give it just a little bit of different look, but just changing the size and the color can really do a lot. You can even select multiple trees and then just do Control D to duplicate or right click uh, and go to duplicate. And then you can move multiple clusters of trees around at the same time if you don't want to move them one by one. The great thing about working in vector art is that you can always go back in after the fact and adjust any individual object or path without having to worry about layers or worrying about something merging with something else like it would with a raster image. That's one thing I really, really like is that you can go in and touch up very easily, changing colors, moving things around, changing sizes and rotation uh, without getting uh, too messy. We'll add a gradient to the background here. So this is just a gradient from blue fading to a white. Uh, we can add some more detail to the mountains. So anything we want to, we can add detail to create sort of some highlights now that we have our sun placed in the sky. We can kind of imagine how that light would be looking uh, over top of this rock, different shadows that it would create and different highlights that it would create on, I guess this is like, yeah, a rock outcropping now. So we can add as much detail, as much or as little detail as we want. Something else interesting about working in vector is that you don't always have to have an incredible amount of detail for something to look really well. Um, that sometimes the viewer can use their imagination. So just a, a simple outline across the top can give a lot of depth and they kind of use their imagination to fill in, even subconsciously, to fill in the rest of that image. So you don't have to worry about providing too much detail, especially for objects that are more distant in the background. We'll add clouds in the sky, again, just using the path tool and add some highlights to these clouds. We can always change the colors after the fact. Adjusting the opacity is going to help us achieve a good look for these clouds. Now that the drawing is just about finished, we can go through and change the colors if we want to provide a different look. So the, the look it was drawn in might have been more of like an early morning. And if we want it to be more like noonday, we can add, a, uh, add some more color. 
to end. Uh, with that color, we can also add in some more highlights if we want to. But we can see with more light brings more vibrant colors. And that's what we're going to talk about more in the next video too, is how to change this scene to night uh, without changing much of the artwork, but by just changing the colors used and everything else staying the same. It's actually a really good, uh, really good process to, to watch happen and to get familiar with um, different times of day and uh, I guess working with different lighting in the artwork. We can add some sun rays to the sun here, again using the path tool. We add these and then we can just go ahead and turn off the stroke, turn on a fill and add a gradient. So this is a radial gradient out from the center and then we can adjust the rotation and how that fades out. Well that's the finished image guys. Thanks for watching. Leave your questions and comments below if you have any and I'll catch you in the next video.